Free MakerBot. And last week we raised a little bit of a ruckus launching this machine. Um, our goal at MakerBot from the beginning was to make a 3D printer for everyone and put it on, make it as accessible as possible so that every creative explorer could have a tool to make anything they needed. Um, let's see. I think everyone who's been involved in open hardware or been an employee of MakerBot or contributed to MakerBot can see this machine as a win for open hardware. We started and while our first mission was to put 3D printers on the desktops of everyone, we did this with an open, like literally an open heart to try and make this work. And it came from our desire to share. So to be kind of clear, because I, for whatever, you know, because I will say this machine is not 100% open, but we just released, well, actually we've been developing it in the wild, the, the software. We've got the MakerBot slicing engine, possibly the best slicing engine ever made. It does in seconds what used to take hours, and um, that's all open. The MakerBot firmware and the MakerBot driver, open. The software alone represents over a million dollars in people working, being paid during the day to do this work. On the hardware side, we've kept the Mighty Board for the, this Replicator 2, same thing as the Replicator 1. And there, we made a little tweak because like, there were some tweaks, but really not uh, functionally the exact same board. And the extruder is functionally the exact same extruder. So people are like, why are you publishing these? And it's like, well, they're the same. We did. Um, uh, so we're really proud to put these things out in the world. When we started, we started with the prototype that we generate. We, we literally, these machines, uh, you can really see that we started pretty rough. We literally made a prototype and we were like, great, it works, let's ship it. And you can see we've got, got a progression here as we've been progressing towards getting to a machine that's more universal, that's more friendly, that's more accessible to a wider group of people. And you know, our first, like 50% of the people who bought them originally were programmers, which I think says something to the character of the machine and, and, and the maker ethic behind it. And when we shif shif shifted to the replicator one, the original replicator, people were like, what, I don't get to put it together anymore? And we were like, yeah, there's a lot of reasons for that. We make it assembled because otherwise it takes about eight to nine hours of customer support to help people make it. But people were pretty upset that we didn't have to make it as a kid anymore. And that was a bummer for us because we were like, but it's so easy for you to make other things with it and you don't get bogged down. And sales kind of went through the roof. So that was one of those things where we saw, first of all, the kind of core of our community shift a little bit and open up to a bigger, a bigger community. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of derivatives of these. Um, we really like, like for example, there's a, uh, a guy named W.J. Steele who just launched Ultrabot. He's got a campaign on Kickstarter. He made a derivative of a cupcake, and he did this by really liking his cupcake and making modifications upon modifications until he basically had a new machine, and then he launched a whole Kickstarter on it. We think that's cool. Stuff like this, while, um, so this is a MakerBot on Alibaba, and for about half the cost that you can get of a, 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 the original replicator. And I got a lot of flack. People said, you, you did open source hardware. This is totally allowed underneath the, the licenses you, you release things under. Like, what do you, so, you, know, you know, what did you expect? And um, it's true, they're right. We, this is a, a result of something that we did, but it doesn't mean we have to like it. So some of the changes, shifts we've just made that have made some, uh, pe some people grumpy. Uh, we're not currently releasing the design files of the, for, for the body of the MakerBot replicator. The replicator too. The replicator one's open. That's because it's powder coated steel. And unless you have like an open source steel bender, you're not going to be able to do this. It's not something you can do at home. It's something that really you have to have a manufacturing facility to do. Um, we're also not open at not sharing the GUI of MakerBot MakerWare, which is the software that runs it. And 
That's just because we want to have a chance to really control the look and feel and the experience of the user. And these things are really valuable to people who want to clone us and just make co like carbon copy clones. And we're not, and, and we're not into that, but it's still hackable, still modifiable. You know, we got a lot of criticism for this. And uh, I personally am used, you know, been on the internet for a long time, so I'm used to bad language and disrespectful behavior. But I think that one of the downsides and one of the challenges we face as a community is when the trolls come out and they get some traction and they, like, we really got, had a rough week where people were like, we're not 100% open source, die. Um, other companies and other individuals and other people start seeing projects saw a lot of ugliness from the community last week and that doesn't encourage people to be more open. And I think that's something to talk about is how do we encourage people to grow their, their projects into businesses and grow their businesses into successful large businesses that can hire a lot of people and let people shift from doing open source as something they do on nights and weekends into something they do during for their day job. So let's, t I, I, I get to, you know, that was the, I wanted to address that and kind of wrap that up and kind of give, show you hopefully, you know, a little bit about this. I've written about this extensively, spent my weekend responding to comments and uh, on the MakerBot blog. So if you want to get more into that, there's more information there. Um, I'm going to talk about stuff that I'm excited about. I see that the wages of workers in places like China are going up. In the past three years, many factories have had wages triple. This gives an opportunity to, for one thing, other places to manufacture things. And for furthermore, not just manufacturers to manufacture things, but it, with the tools that we have today, we have the opportunity to take manufacturing back into the home, back into the garages. You, know, you used to have to think about making a product, and you had to think in the tens of they're like 10,000 to 100,000 units to justify manufacturing, to get it past that idea, just to get it past the, the idea stage of it. And now we're in a place where, with 3D printing and with the kind of tools that we are all collectively making, we have an opportunity to empower so much awesome creativity and innovation in the world that it's, things are shifting. It's, and you can smell it. You can smell it in this room really strong. It's good smell. <laughs> the cool thing about this is that more and more of us, I mean, I'm kind of curious, I can't really see you very well, but can anybody, can anybody who has a user in their day job, they create open source infrastructure, can you raise your hands? Can we give all these people a round of applause? What do we have to do so that all of you can have, raise your hands for their questions, so that we can all be contributing to the greater good? So, I uh, just basically explained the second one too. Great, okay, and I'm getting my warning. So, the, the big what happens next is gonna really be powered, and people are gonna be inspired by what the people, the, the, what happens next is gonna happen because of the people in this room and how they inspire others. And, what they do to make that happen. Um, I have to say, for all the drama, a lot of people have stepped up in the last week and given us feedback and criticism, constructive criticism, and support. I've had a number of people here come up to me and say, I'm a business, I know exactly where you're at, it sucks, I support you. And um, even the people who gave us con constructive criticism I want to say from everyone at MakerBot, this is a photo taken in our manufacturing facility. Um, thank you for supporting us. Uh, I think that's, that's it. So thank you very much.